Hello, it is day one of Foodieland San Diego here at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Even though technically it's about 25 to 30 minutes from San Diego, it's kind of like that situation where Anime Impulse LA is in Pomona, even though I guess it's in LA County. But anyway, it is 4.42 and this event started at 3 p.m. today and ends around 10 or 11. I have to double check because I think the times that they put on social media is a bit different from the actual hours. Tomorrow and Sunday, it supposedly starts at 1 and ends at 10, though I have heard that it closes at 11, so I don't really know either. Again, I feel like I'm, as you know if you've watched my other vlogs, I am a bit burnt out. I'm basically treating this event as a type of vacation event, or some people like to call it vacation cons, mostly because if I didn't have a friend who was vending here and I rarely get to see Ivy in San Diego, or actually this is my first time vending in San Diego and seeing her here rather than her coming up to LA, I probably would not have done Foodie Land. So I'm really just, my goal is to basically break even and cover expenses. I am, again, I'm just, I'm really out of it. Right now I do have a little bit of a headache. I think I'm just really exhausted and I need more rest. So after this, I am going on a sort of event hiatus and I won't be vending until AX Chibi, which is in mid-November or so. I don't really have much expectations. I heard the Del Mar Foodie Land did do well, I think back in May. So I don't really have high hopes for this one. It did rain a little bit earlier today. Luckily, I did have my canopy walls up. So if anything, most of the water just went on that. There was some water that seeped underneath, but it wasn't that big of an issue if anything the ground just got wet and most of my stuff is either elevated or they're waterproof so i'm not worried about it hello <laughs> no, good to see you. thank you for the scissors thank you i was about to grab your truck oh yeah it's okay <laughs> look how cute her display looks and she has a mirror i feel like more people should have mirrors it's fantastic so cute then look at the hats i like this one that one's very cute. And it has pom-pom on the bottom. This is how we record content. Here's a display for this weekend. I did bring the banner, however, I forgot to bring my second banner, which I usually have, especially when I'm on a corner, but what can I do? I have the Eater bags over there, the shaker keychains, lanyards, car magnets, stickers are down here, phone grips, pins, I do have the lights, however, I need to put some lights on the corners. We are good to go. Hello, it is 8.35 and it is much later in the day. Now that I checked, the event doesn't end until 11, so there's still a couple more hours until we get to clean everything up. To be honest, it wasn't that great this weekend. I think I just need to reevaluate one. I don't know if it's just my display. I don't necessarily think that it's only the items that I'm selling that isn't doing so well for the most part in terms of patterns. A lot of other merch vendors are not doing as amazingly as they used to, so I don't necessarily think it's entirely a problem on my own. However, it does make me want to still evaluate. Is it my display? Is it the products that I'm selling? And I think another one is just night markets are just not working out so well for me. I think it's more so like, I just need to be more picky as to which outdoor events I do. I think I was just very excited with having the opportunity to sign up for a lot of events, which is why I've done so many this year. But now that I know which ones are better for me, I'm going to go into 2024 with that mindset. And now that I'm looking at the numbers, at least for today, while there were sales, I think it might even be worse than 66 Night Market. I'm honestly not mad because I think I'm just fully jaded with all of the disappointments from the past couple weeks that at this point I'm just like, I'm just trying to do all these night markets. I'm trying my best not to sound so defeated, even though that's definitely what I'm feeling right now. I think I just really need a good hiatus, which is happening. Like I'm putting my shop on hiatus, I think next week, just because I need a break, at least before the holidays, because I've been doing either back-to-back -back events or a shop update, and there's just so much going on that I'm really burning myself out and if I don't keep that in check and actually take a proper break, it would not be good. So I think that's where I am mentally. We'll see how this weekend goes. To be honest, I think if it was as hot as when I was at 626 Night Market Arcadia, I would probably hate it. However, the weather is just pristine, at least for me, because I love gloomy, cloudy, cold weather, so I don't hate it. 
2.06 and it is the second day of Foodie Land. For today's hours, it's from 1 to 11, which is a very, very long time. Preferably, I would like it to start at 4 and even 4 is pretty early. In my ideal scenario, it would start at 6 and then maybe end around 11. Obviously, that's not a long time and technically it would be really disadvantageous if you're paying that much and those are the hours, but... I think I'm just jaded from night markets and it's just, you know, that's how it is. Looking back on yesterday's numbers, it honestly was probably my worst one day in a really long time. I think I just did worse than 626 night market. The fact that I haven't even made table yet and table costs are lower at this event versus 626 night market is kind of saying something and I don't think it's because of Foodie Land. I know the previous Foodie Land in Del Mar was pretty good, which is why I have a few vendor friends who signed up for it next year because signups went up for returning vendors like a few weeks ago or so. I think I'm just not going to sign up for Foodie Land next year only because I feel like it's just not for me and I do want to reduce the number of events I'm doing because I'm just burnt out a little bit. I do have a little bit higher hopes, again low expectations but higher hopes for today. There was a crowd when I did start coming in, so I'm not too worried. If anything, again, I just want to break even, and that means like table cost, gas, and food, then it's fine. I need a vacation. <laughs> Honestly, if I could just change the lighting, I would not do this angle because I don't like how I look with this lighting. Ideally, it would be the other way, like, like this. However, if I did have it that way, it would be very, very shaky. It's currently 7.27 and I think there's about three something hours left until this event ends. It is slightly busier than yesterday. Um, there were a few crowds, however. While I am at the number of transactions that did exceed yesterday, which I was hoping would happen because it rained yesterday and it is Saturday, which typically is the busiest of the entire weekend. I think last time when I did 626 Night Market, Sunday was actually my busiest for the most recent one. So usually Saturday, Sunday, they tend to be about the same or one of them exceeds the other. I feel like for the most part, if anything, when an event isn't that busy, you do need to think of some things that you can do during the downtime. I don't often recommend this for every event because if you're doing an event that's as busy as like Anime Expo and there happens to be some downtime, I really do believe that you need to take that time to center yourself and rest because it can be very stressful if you don't have that rest period. However, for an event that isn't as busy, at least for vendors and merch, I would just try to be productive with whatever you can do. So for me, I did set up my Anime Expo Chibi table layout because I'm not going to have time to do that as it gets closer to November, as well as work on my script for one of my YouTube videos. Really just getting that out of the way. I know when I was talking to Ivy, she basically sketched out like a heck of a lot of bucket hat ideas, which was super cute. So really just figuring out like what are some things I can do now, whether that's creating content for social media or working on new print designs or product designs because you don't want to waste your time when an event isn't doing as well as you thought it would be. So at least you did get something out of it. One thing I will add though that I'm a little surprised about is that a majority of my transactions have actually been with enamel pins and keychains. I would say I can count like maybe like on two hands like the number of people who bought stickers which is like very low and actually a little interesting for a night market because usually night markets I expect a lot of purchases of my stickers because they are a lower cost item but most people have been purchasing pins, not as many phone grips, and a lot of my items that were purchased were also fan art because I know from 626 Night Market, Totoro is really popular. Usually my original designs of the I have no idea what I'm doing hat and the accepting apologies in cash bunny sticker is really popular. However, I don't think anyone bought any of those. So it's kind of interesting seeing the difference in purchase pattern here versus back in LA and with night markets. So it's 10.07 and it's been several hours since my last clip and looking at the numbers, I think at this point I did break even with table costs, gas, food. So I guess I'm personally not satisfied, however, in terms of my very, 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 very low expectations and really just treating this 
as a vacation event, I basically hit that goal, so I just need to appreciate it a little bit more. Hello, it is the last day of Foodieland. It is 1.53 p.m. and honestly, looking at my numbers from the past couple days, for some reason I feel a little confident that Sunday will be better than Saturday, even though usually Saturday is my best. However, it's not going to be amazing numbers. Some insight on this event, it is about $500. I know they are increasing it next year. It's around $600. This year they did include a canopy. However, next year you would have to pay $100 just to rent one. The space is 10 by 10. You do have to bring all of your equipment, whether that's tables, display, chairs, and so on. It does include electricity. If you're a typical, like somewhat artist alley vendor, you're fine. I don't think you need to purchase more electricity. I think it's more so if you somehow need electricity the entire time, but at least for me, I only need it when it's nighttime because I need it for lights. I think next year, I don't really see myself doing Foodie Land specifically, only because a lot of the events are up north. There's only a couple that are down south in SoCal. And even then, I just, I personally don't justify doing those events again. I think for some vendors it might work out for you, but I think mine is just so anime specific and I do have higher price items that I don't think I would do so well here versus 626 Night Market, if you can believe that. I think I'm just going to stick to a small number of night markets and then those night markets will probably be 626. I just don't see myself doing food lab. I will say though, when it comes to the last day, I do try to put away things that I know I'm going to put away anyway so I don't have to do it later when I'm stressed and dealing with all of the cleanup and organization. So usually what I like to do is just with all these canopy walls, usually I have walls wherever there's neighbors. So if I know that the other booth neighbor has their canopy wall up, like in this case, they have their wall up here, then I'll put mine down so I can just fold it already and put it away in my bin and not have to worry about it later. If anything, I was talking to some vendor friends and one of the good things about a slower market is that it's a great opportunity to network with other vendors and make friends because usually if an event is too busy, there's not a lot of time to talk to other people. So this really was a good opportunity to just catch up with some people, especially since some of them are probably not going to be at anime cons or LA Comic Con this year. So this might be the last time I'll see them until next night market season. Gotta find the positives where we can and just be productive where we can as well. I don't know where this light is coming from. Anyway, it's 4.44 p.m. So it's been a couple hours since the previous clip. Interestingly enough, I think today is a little bit busier than yesterday. And I've noticed that usually for night markets, it tends to pick up more so when it gets cooler because it's not as hot. So a lot of people do come in in the evening, usually around like 6, 7 p.m. and then onwards, and then it kind of dies down around 10 p.m. I feel like most of my sales this weekend at Foodie Land has mostly been during the day. And I've noticed that it kind of tends to slow down, at least for me, as it gets later. So it's just something to consider I kind of thought was interesting. There were a few sticker sales, but consistently I feel like pins and phone grips and some keychains have been doing better than stickers. Hello. How much for the purple? The sticker pins. Um, all the stickers are $5. Should I get the sticker? I say that right before I get the sticker sale. So it is 7.58 and there's about two more hours until this event officially ends. I am just so disappointed and it's again it's not the event itself I was talking with a few other vendor friends and they've come to the same conclusion basically that most events just level off by Labor Day or if anything maybe earlier just based on the past month or so of events I don't even, I don't even know how many events I've done at this point but after all of those events I've basically seen that same conclusion and again as mentioned before I'm just really going to reduce the number of night markets that I do because I don't think that it's working out for me. So I'm really just going to choose the night markets that have done well for me before or are local and don't require as much financial responsibility up front besides table costs. So at this point, I know, you know, like I'm disappointed, but I'm just glad that I was able to see friends and see a lot of you since I'm very rarely, no, I'm not even rarely, I haven't been to the San Diego area in probably like 17 years. It was really nice seeing all of you guys, especially those of you from YouTube and social media, and I say this 
this every time, but I really appreciate when you do visit my booth. It's really fun seeing your pin collections on the Eda bags or just seeing that you follow me because sometimes I am not really aware of that. Like to me, it kind of feels like just numbers like on social media and YouTube, but then seeing you in person, it's like, oh, like people actually watch my stuff, which is pretty great. So thank you. Other than that, I would say like the only downside really is just finances, but everything else has been great. The weather's been nice uh, compared to Arcadia where it's been 90 freaking something. And then here it's like in the 70s and it's nice and breezy even if it is sunny. I really like this angle and I hope it's not overly shaky, but thank you so much for watching. If you watched this far, I really appreciate you. And watch this video if you want to see my past 626 Night Market videos for comparison. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.